above all names. The name above all names. The name above. The name above all names. 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 This is Jesus Christ. The name above all names. The rose of Sharon. The name above all names. The ancient of the The name above all names. The bright and the morning star. The name above all names. The first and the last. The name above all names. The name Yeshua Hamashiach. The name above all names. The beginning and the end. The name above all names, King of Glory. The name above all names, King of Peace. The name above all names, the only name that saves. The name above all names, His name is Jesus Christ. The, the name, name above all names, the name above all names, the name above. The word of God says that uh, he has been given unto man only one name. He has been given unto man only one name. <laughs> he has been given unto man only one name. In that name, man can call man can trust in man can be set free man can be delivered man can be healed man can be raised man can be made whole only one name Jesus Christ the name above all other names in the heaven on the earth below the earth in every spiritual atmosphere the name above all names I want to invite you to acknowledge the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I want to invite you to See the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I want to invite you to receive the name of Jesus Christ. Yeshua Hamashiach. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. I want you to receive the Lord. I want you to receive him. He says, I'm at the door. He was in 
only on the door of the Christians or the unbelievers. It's at the door of everyone. Whosoever heareth him and open up, even as you heareth him today. Even as you heareth him now. Whosoever heareth him and open up. You say, I will come in. I will abide and I will dine with you and you with him. He says, as I come in, I overtake your worries. I overtake your anxieties. I overtake your heaviness. I overtake your fear. I overtake your doubts. I overtake your unbelief. I overtake every oppression, every depression. I overtake every mindset. He says, as I come in, I overtake in order to set you free. Free from yourself. Free from others. Free from this world. Free from the power of sin. Free from everything that is not in the knowledge of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. To set you free and to set you whole and to make you whole. Ha! He comes in to renew. He comes in to make new again. He comes in to make a new thing. He comes in to pick you up. He comes in because he says he loved us first, even before we loved him. Because he sought us, because he called us first, even before we said yes. So he comes in and says, I still did die on the cross even at the time you were not worthy. I did not wait for your worthiness in order to manifest unto you my grace. And so let the grace of the Lord, let the grace of Jesus Christ of Nazareth penetrate your mortal mind, penetrate your mortal body, penetrate your mortal spirit, penetrate you at every level and change you and change you and transform you and set you free and liberate you from the burden of the anxiety of this present world from the burden of the anxiety of this world what shall you eat what shall you wear where shall you sleep what shall you do he said follow me so i will make you make you make you follow me I will make you, make you. He will make out of you his purpose. He will make out of you his destiny that he has called for you. And he will make you fisher of the souls of men. Father, we bless your name, Lord God. We thank you for all that you do. We thank you for this very time, for what you have provided unto us, for leading us and for guiding us, for your spirit and your help in time of need. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, oh. I was trying to do like this, and then I realized it wasn't there. <laughs> Hallelujah. So for those of you who don't know, my name is Rabbi. <laughs> but the Rabbini has gone to the Mount Sinai. <laughs> He's he going to be back, but next year. <laughs> hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. 
If you please with me, take your Bible in the book of uh, Deuteronomy. When I hear Deuteronomy, I think of the French déterré. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy. Uh, can, can you put for us the, the message today? Is the Lord says, and, and, and that's not only what the word Lord says, but he commands you to know that he shall make thee the head and not the tail. Hallelujah. So let's go in the word of God. We're going to take the book of Deuteronomy. And we will start from verse 1. We're talking about Deuteronomy chapter 28. Hallelujah. We're going to start from verse 1. And we will follow through by the grace of our Lord. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 28, starting from verse 1. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandment which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations on, of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face, they shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Verse 8. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself as he had sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandment of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body and in the fruit of thy cattle and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thy hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath, if that thou hearken unto thou hearken unto the commandment of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. Verse 14. Go ahead, go ahead, verse 14. Verse 14. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. Hallelujah. Amen. And thou shalt not go aside from all that I command you this day. Now, the commandment of the Lord according to the whole testament was the 10 commandments that he gave right this 10 commandment did not expire 
The Ten Commandments did not finish. They were only resumed by the Lord Jesus Christ into two commandments. He says the first will be what? You shall love the Lord thy God. Amen? With all your heart, your strength, your mind, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So the commandments did not vanish, but the, the, the doing of it has been replaced How? by the Lord. Meaning, it's no longer us we do, do the commandment of the Lord in our strength, with our strength, by keeping all that we do in our strength in order to please him. But it is God in us that does the will of God. Are you what I'm saying? So the spirit in us, the Bible says, he gives us the will to do his will. For it to happen, the spirit of God has to overtake you, exchange with you the mental. You remove your mental. He puts on you his mental. He works in you. He works with you. And he works through you. That's why you say when you go somewhere and then you speak, don't worry about even what you're going to say if they arrest you or if they put you before the Sandrine. For at that same very hour, what would happen? The Holy Ghost will speak through you. So from the time of Jesus Christ, the requirement of the law did not go away. He were only fulfilled in Christ. So those who are in Christ, they put on the righteousness of Christ in order to have a demand and to tap into the result or into the... Um, uh, uh, to tap in, into the result, the outcome, okay, the fruit of the promises. That's why the Bible says that in Christ, the promises of God are yea and amen. Where? In him, not outside of him. So before we out to do all those different law, bite by bite, line by line, comma by comma, in order to receive the result or the attached promise. So unless we did exactly, if he says, thou shall walk three times, you shall walk three times. If you have walked two times and 99, it ain't going to happen. So it was a strict, continual effort from the person in order to not even please God, in order to be a little bit closer. <laughs> Because the Bible said that our sins were not forgiven by the sacrifices we were doing in the Old Testament. So he comes and he explained unto us that if you have failed unto only one commandment, you did what? You failed unto all of them. Who, gonna, who, 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 who is able to make this? Hallelujah. No one is able and capable to follow all the commandments of God continually without failing. Even the young ruler that Jesus Christ loved the most, I mean, uh, uh, so much, he said, you have still failed one. <laughs> Hallelujah. He recognized that he was able to keep much all of it, but there was one he still failed out of it. Now, how do we apply the whole testament promises in our today's life? Well, by the word of God saying that in Christ, all the promises of God are yea and amen. So now for me to receive the promises of God, I have to recognize whether my identity in Christ has been now completely sealed, completely renewed, and completely set. If I recognize that I am the child of God and I am a descendant of Abraham, then therefore I can inherit of the promises gave, uh, of the inheritance gave, give, given to Abraham. Does it make sense? Because I need to be first a child of that descendant, of, of, of that ancestor, or of that father, in order for me to receive what is due unto me. So I recognize that I am a child of God, but I see that... The things that God said I should have, I don't have them. Is that because God lied? No. It's because somehow I may not have, have the mindset or the understanding that this thing he said that are for me must come to me. He says this. First, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then, 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 then all these promises 
will be handed on to you. So he didn't say you will live on this earth only to please me and only to be a Christian and then go in heaven. But as long as you live on earth and your mind is set on the things of heaven, he will add on you the things that he has promised on earth. Hallelujah. So you will not be the tail. You will not be the tail. Now, why? You see, to not be the tail, not to be a tail, means that my mindset has to be renewed into how I think. If I think as the tail, I will stay at the tail. For the word of God says that uh, let the same mind that is in Christ Jesus be also in you and then be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So we know that we cannot conform according to this present world, but how the Lord says in the word. So the way you think, so you be. So regardless of how you claim and then you claim and you prophesy and you decree and you declare and then, then you are wah, 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 wah. If you don't think that way, your declaration <laughs> won't do no nothing. Because so you think, so you be. So when you say, for instance, you go meet somebody and then in your thinking is, oh, I'm so small you start thinking like the children of Israel before the, um, the no, no, uh, in the wilderness, uh, 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 when they went to uh, spy against the land of Canaan. Amen. They saw the land and they saw who? The giants. And their thinking were, ah, we are like grass uppers before them. And the Bible tells us that there were only how many people Two, Joshua and Caleb, who were able to think otherwise, to say, even though we may be that small, yet the Lord who sent us is greater than the one we're facing. So they were able to think that we are not going to take this. The Lord said he will fight for us. So when you present yourself before an opportunity, when you present yourself before something, the way you think, that's how you will be. That's how you will act. That's how you will react. If the person says, come sit down over here, the person may look at you like, like uh, the, 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 the son of the king, and he will give you the, the promises of the king, or he will give you the, the, the honor of the, of the, of the, of the prince, the, the child of the king. And the person look at you as the son of the king, but you look yourself as a slave. So when he says, come sit in my presence, oh, <laughs> oh, you see what I'm saying? Fake humility. Because the pre it's not arrogance you have to have. It's not also fake humility. Why? Because you have to recognize who you are. When the person says, the Lord Jesus said, when you come, first go. When it comes in the celebration of a wedding, first go, sit down in the back. And then the master of the celebration of the feast can look at you and recognize you and say, you over there, come over here. Hallelujah. So once he has recognized you, that means he has identified your importance. He has identified your lineage. You can no longer act like, no, 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 it's okay. I will stay here. So you think, so you will stay there. So for you and I not to no longer be at the tail, we need to first change the way we think. We literally need to change the way we think. And the word of God tells us that whatever that is of good report, we ought to think of it. Whatever that is of nobility, we have to think of it. So to change the way of think or to, to, to change the way we think is to think about the word of God. Because the more I think about the word of God, the more I think about the promises of God, the more I think about the love of God, the more I think about the sacrifice, the more I think about those things that makes him be my God, the more I change my interaction with men. So now I will not speak unto men as if I am the tail. I will speak unto men as I am the head. If you enter a business, if you enter an administration, if you enter a place, 
And then you go and you ask, can I please have this seat? Well, if the seat is supposed to be the seat of the director of the PD, uh, I say PDG, <laughs> CEO, if the seat is supposed to be for a highest level personality, because you don't know, you will ask for it. If they tell you, oh, this one is reserved for the highest one, your normal come on, answer, reaction should be, oh, May I, may, I, may, I, may I don't then sit in? <laughs> are, you, are you what I'm saying? Let me repeat again. You go in a place. And I said, this is reserved for highest personality. And you're like, oh, oh, excuse me. And then you're looking for a tabre. <laughs> That's the way you think. But if they say, this is for the highest personality. I am. May I sit there? Because what I'm trying to say here is that the way you think will not turn you away from things because they are supposedly tagged by men being greater. The thing is that you are greater than what men have tagged you off and weak. I repeat again. You are greater than what men has tagged you off and weak. Men can look at you and tag you with anything. But if God said you are not that thing, it means you are not that thing. So how do you get into the place where you are not at the tail? How do you get into a place where you are above? How do you get in the place where you are succeeding? How do you get in the place where you are advancing? Well, you got to first refusing of thinking of problems. You have to first, let, let, me, let, let me break it down. There is a situation that uh, you need to deal with. Instead of like, huh? oh, hey, just you, my old. <laughs> you know, you know, some people, they, they do like that. They're like, hey, I'm finished. I'm finished. But what happened to your life? Did your life, you will be finished. You know what I'm saying? So the way even you think, will make what happened become effective or deficient. So when a situation is before you, by refusing of thinking this is the last thing, how? By knowing whether God said, okay, this one is over or not. At the end of the day, you must make sure that it is God who tells you this situation is over. So for you to think at the head and not the tail, is to always refuse a yeah or a no that you have heard of men if God did not say yeah or no. When you interact with men, some people, the same person who refused them, if the same person knows somebody who knows them, and recommend them, the same person who refuse you will accept you. So it means it's not a refusal that is like an eternity refusal. It means somebody can refuse something based on how you appear. Based on how he receives from you. Based on how he thinks that your value is so or so. So the expression of your faith in the Lord by staying at the head and not at the tail is not that you are not realizing that you are missing something. It's that you realize you miss something, but you know that what you're missing is being given by the Lord. Let me give an example. You want to, let's say, you want to open something, a business. And then I tell you, ah, you have to give $2 million. Well, if you're missing those $2 million, it does not mean you don't have it. If you're missing the $2 million, you may be missing those $2 million at the time they're asking you in the physical, but it does not mean that you don't have it. Let me explain why. 
Who's the God, the master, and the Lord of all riches of the earth? If the Lord, my Lord, my God, my Father is the Father, is the, the master, the owner of all riches, then what I'm not possessing at the time is not that he doesn't have it. I don't know if you make sense. When I come and they say two million or nothing, I don't have it at the time they're asking in my hands. I will not act like I'm the last broke person of the of the earth because my thinking would have changed, and I would have known that my God will supply. So what I will do? I will tell them I'll be back. I go back to my Lord. Father, thank you for having provided. How I'm not trying to tell you on how you have to do what you have to do. But I'm telling you, thank you for having done what you already said you will do. Hallelujah. Now, either somebody going to give you the things, either you're going to have a market or a business, a contract that will give you the money, or you will go to the same person, the person we will do, okay, wave it. You feel what I'm saying? The same requirement that they had on you that we say, okay, this time is waived. You don't have to do this in order to do this. Why? Because not being at the tail and being at the head is not a matter of proclamation. It's a matter of mindset in Christ. Ah, do I get at the place where it is the Lord that I honor with all I do, with all I have? Being at the head. Why would I want to be at the head? For my own sake or for the praise of God? If you think of being at the head so people will see you, then you will be at the tail. You are already at the tail anyway. <laughs> but if you think I'll be at the head so Christ be lifted up, hallelujah, amen, so your way of thinking must need to change let me read verse 13 or verse 13 verse 13 of chapter 28 Deuteronomy he says and the Lord shall make thee take the same verse as in Genesis and the Lord made man Hallelujah. So that word make is like in China when they do and then they do something and they put made in China. What it means? It has been taught, it has been manufactured, it has been designed in a place where they had the resources to do so. So when God said, I will make thee, he says, he has the resources. To cause you to become made in heaven. Hallelujah. So he has the resources. He has the connections. He has a network. Because remember. Somebody refused you something. And somebody knows the person who refused you. Who also knows you. And the person who knows the person who refused you. Goes to the person telling him. Ah this is my guy. Or this is my daughter. Yada yada yada. And the person who refused you say now yes. That's network. God has his own network. So when I start thinking Literally. I am part of the network of God, the family of God. Then, however, there is somewhere God, we have somebody that he will connect to you or to me for the purpose of his praise. So now thinking as I am at the tail is not in the matter of I am not at the tail. I am not at the tail. No, it's a matter of how ah, you express from inside of you. 
how you see every difficulties, how you see every challenges, as you see every how you see every adversities as being an opportunity to see the hand of God manifested. I will make thee the head and not the tail. Now, being the tail is not something that is, uh, should I say, horrible. And the tail is just, you just have to follow. So you have no decision. If the country says famine, you won't eat. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Because you will have to follow based on what's going on in the world and in the circumstances around you. That's being the tail. If it's closed, you're out. Being at the head is when everything is closed, you're still functioning. Being at the head is when there is famine, you're still eating. Being at the head is when there is oppression, you're still praying. Being at the head is when everything is closed, you're still open. Is also being at the head. So your thinking, your manners, your behaviors, your characters, and things that surrounds you will be as you think. Because as you think that, hey, I am in the place of famine, but I will eat. I am in the place of famine, but I'm not worried. The Lord shall provide. The Lord is providing. The Lord is my provider. The Lord, thank you. And then you start thinking, and then you start thinking, thinking and thinking, thinking and thinking. At the end of the day, God will do like the widow of Zarepta. He will bring somebody that will come your way and manifest in your life things for increase. Am I speaking to somebody? They said no. Nowadays we know that everything is called now Ukraine and Russia. The Yuka is Ukraine. Hallelujah. The lipstick comes from Ukraine. So whatever you want to ask for, double and triple. The price double, triple. You went yesterday to some place. If you wait and you didn't buy what you wanted to buy, you go home and you come back. They say you couldn't pass over here. Now, for proof, I was with a lady speaking. And I said, I want to buy this. And I saw the price. And at the same time I saw the price, I made the order. And I was communicating with uh, the owner of the, of, of the place. And then she said, and, and, and then I asked her, okay, when are you going to ship and so forth, so forth. And then she said, this one you ordered, this is the price. I said, uh-uh. The price you're giving me and the price I'm seeing and the same thing. What you're giving me is higher than what I'm seeing. And she said, ah, Ukraine. That, that, that the dollar has changed. I say, I, I say from, the, from the moment I saw, and from the moment I speak to you, the dollar changed. <laughs> That's how fast. <laughs> Amen. So I told her, you want to change, you can change it. But it will be for others, not for me. Hallelujah. What it means is that in your mindset, as you're thinking of what God said he shall do, he will do and has done, you are not thinking in a way where could it be possible? Or would that happen also to me? No. You are thinking in a way where because you have it, then you operate into it. Am I making sense? So I will make you the head 
and not a tail. And thou shalt be above. How? Only. <laughs> See, God said thou shalt be above only. In another word, you are not supposed to be up and down. You are supposed to be up only. <laughs> thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. As I said earlier, in the Old Testament, all the commandments had a binding on whether you do or you don't. And if you don't do one, everything that you have done is forfeited. Hallelujah. But the promises that he has given are not expired. They are not. The promises of God, if they were expired, they wouldn't have been yea and amen in Christ. All the promises. So he includes salvation, deliverance, healing, finances, health. He includes all the promises. Hallelujah. The problem of the children of God is they feel more comfortable of having health, but they don't want money. Or they want money, but they don't want spiritual insight. So they're always looking for this one more and for that one less. But it says, all of them should be in your life and my life because you are walking through Christ. And in Christ. So Christ exchanges with you. Christ puts on you his righteousness. Because none of them that he has done you can do. So as you are in Christ. Your situation is Christ's situation. Your difficulties becomes his. So he takes on him the curse that was on us when we are in him, as long as we remain in him. Therefore, we can humbly say, Lord, you say, ask, and it shall be given. So I'm asking you to grant me this. I'm asking you to open for me this. Sometimes people say, you know, all I do, I don't even pray for myself. I pray only for other people. I say this sounds humble. This sounds great. This looks awesome. They will say no because I know my Lord already take care of me. So I'm not worried. So I'm not asking for anything to God. Well, the problem is that he says to us, you have not because you ask not. He says, your father knows what you need by asking. Hallelujah. But ask him. So for you, not to think that you can ask for yourself can sometimes become the root of fake humility. For you are thinking only on yourself also is the root of pride. So how you look at yourself and you look at everyone around, if you don't have, what would you give to other? Even when it comes, for instance, for the gifts of the Spirit. The Lord has blessed some people with some gifts. But he also wants you and I to have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. 
So he say, ask. Even to ask the gift, you don't ask for it. So at the end of the day, the commandment of God or the word of the Lord that tells you even simply ask, you don't do it. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So for you and for I, he says, he will not make us be at the tail. He will make us be at the head. Verse 12 says, of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. Verse 12 says, The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven, to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thy hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Let me tell you something. There are people today who do lend to many nations. When I say people, I'm talking about single people, not governments. Hallelujah. Many of them, they are not Christian. Hallelujah. Some of them, they're not even 40 or 50 years old. Meaning they did not need to wait until they were 120 in order for them to see their life for a change. But yet, they are not of the Lord. The Lord said, We let its rain fall. But if you say, No, it's all right, my land is already wet, I don't need rain. When the time comes when you need, you may find yourself already in a denial. Because you already refuse the blessings of God for the sake of fake humility. So for you and I, we out now to renew our mind, say, oh Lord, whatever your word says that I have missed, whatever your word says that I have missed, or I did not believe, or refused, I repent. Because the Lord says he will give to you. You say, no, I don't need it because all I need is the Lord. But the Lord that you need, he comes with all. Hallelujah. Because if you say all I need is Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ comes with all. All riches, all wisdom, all knowledge, all health, all power, all, uh, all God. All, he comes with all. He doesn't come only with, you are holy, you are holy. Amen. Because he himself on earth, did not, he did not stay on the mountain only. On earth, he was also eating food. He was in weddings. Hallelujah. So he comes with all. So if you say all I need is Jesus Christ, then whatever the Lord will give unto you, you cannot refuse. For the sake of fake humility or lack of understanding. Hallelujah. Many times, whatever the enemy has tagged wrong, that was right, we sometimes also saw it wrong. For instance, 
The enemy has raised a type of people who all they do is money, 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 money preaching, right? And they do it so much that it becomes a tag. But the purpose of the enemy is to defraud the true children of God. To have them let go of their possession into the end of the enemy. Does it make sense? That, that's, that's how he's still. Because while he's defrauding somebody over there, and then you say, ah, because they are all, all time, every time saying money, 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 therefore, and the Lord no, you find yourself not asking what is yours. Not receiving what is yours. Somebody was praying one time and he says, Lord, don't make me rich. Don't make me poor. Give me only what I need. This is a prayer that shows that uh, he's selfish. Because all he wants, he wants to eat food with his family. What about the neighbor? Hallelujah. If you don't have to give to the neighbor, it's only for your family. Then your prayer is selfish. Hallelujah. So some people think they are praying holy. Oh Lord, I don't want to be rich. I don't want to be poor. Just what I need for me and my family. Uh -uh. He will make you the head. In the way you think, you ought to think the way Christ think it. He says he will bless the work of thy hand. The Lord, I read from verse 12. He says, the Lord will bless all the work of thine hand. The question is not whether the Lord wants to bless the hard work of the hand. Hallelujah. The question is not whether he will to bless the work of our hands. The question is whether we believe that what he said, that's what we do. Because you see, when you start something, you only see the beginning. So because you only see the beginning, you sometimes struggle to see how he's going to grow there. But you see, people with big vision, they are little. There is a man in Cameroon. He sat down and he took a table. And then he took a, uh, uh, um, I would call it, a wrap, like a plastic wrap. He put on his table. And then he wrote with a marker on his table, supermarket. Are you what I'm saying? So he has his own fruit juice that he did. He put in bottles. He made his little table across the road, sat down, and wrote on it his name, Julius Supermarket. Uh, you laugh. <laughs> so, and then he was sitting with a red band, uh, like a black, uh, black uh, eye, uh, how was it that? Eyeglasses. Sunglasses, and it was serious. He was in his supermarket. Along the road. Mind you, people passing by, when they see it, there are two reactions. The first one will be... <laughs> yeah, then we act like Sambala. <laughs> You supermarket. <laughs> yeah. The other people will be, wow, he's visionary. He thinks big to the point that he writes on. 
and he takes it seriously and sit and now wait for the client. That's how a Christian should be thinking. Because you are not thinking based on what you have. You think based on what God has. You are not thinking about who you know. You're thinking about who God is. You're not thinking about how you will do. But you are thinking about what God has done. You are not thinking about what you will eat. But you are thinking about what God has blessed with. When the Lord Jesus said, don't think about what you're going to eat, it does not mean that when uh, you think about eating food, then you have been thinking about eating food. It simply means, don't think on how you're going to eat that food. But when you want to eat, think what you want to eat and you will eat. Does it make sense? In another word, for whatever God said, he will bless you with as long as you let him come with all. He said he will bring the rain in his season. So you may not see all of them coming at once. But because there is an appointed season, you must expect it and look for it. And when the season arrives, the Lord says he will cause his rain to fall. And when he has caused his rain to fall, he will bless the work of the hand. Verse 11. And the Lord shall make thee plentous in goods. Hmm. In the fruit of thy body and in the fruit of thy cattle and in the fruit of thy ground and in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. And the Lord shall make thee plain deals in goods. Can you put for me Matthew 6.33? Matthew 6.33. But seek he first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. What was he talking about? Was he talking about spiritual gifts only? Was he talking about spiritual abilities only? He was talking about world or things, earthly things. Okay. Let's read from verse 25. Matthew 6, 25. Mm -hmm. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what he shall eat or what he shall drink, nor yet for your body, what he shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, mm -hmm. Neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Mm. Are ye not much better than they? Amen. Amen. The Lord is even helping us to see us better than how we see ourselves. He says, see, 
them who do nothing, he helped them. How much more you who are his child? So he says, see yourself as the Lord sees you. Are you not better than the things that even God takes care of? Continue. Verse 27. Verse 27. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit into his stature? And why take he thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, <laughs> O he of little faith? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm sure some of them were eating, but we're still worried about what we're going to eat again. <laughs> I'm sure some of them had, and they were already even going to increase. I'm sure some of them had increased, and they were worried if you're going to be sustainable. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Whatever they were in life, they were still looking if this will not finish, vanish, broke, broke down and he said but how is it that worrying about something we add more onto what you worry if it's not only problem hallelujah so he says the reason why you and I do so is because of little he didn't say lack of faith he didn't say, oh, ye of lack of faith. He said, ye of little faith. It means that you have enough faith to get a job, but you don't have enough faith to get a big business. You have enough faith to buy a shoe, but you don't have enough faith to buy the house. So your faith can only take you so far. Because you think that that's only that you can have. Now, when you have faith to buy the shoe, and you don't have faith to buy the, buy the house, now you worry, are you going to have the house? Hallelujah. And then he continued by saying what? Continue, please. Verse 31. Mm -hmm. Therefore... Take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, mm. or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Make, make clear mention. The Gentiles use the principle of increase. The only problem is that it's only increase they're seeking for. Riches is, increase is for everyone. But the Gentiles, they only seek for it. When I say the Gentiles, the Bible talks about who? The unbelievers. They only seek for it. Their heart is on it. The proof is the increase. So in another way, it works. Hallelujah. If it doesn't work, they wouldn't have have. But the Lord now is showing us the best way. Because they seek for it, it works, but they still have no peace. No joy. So the Lord is showing us a better way how to have peace, joy, and increase. He didn't say you will have peace, joy, only without increase. Hallelujah. Continue, please. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. 
For your heavenly Father knoweth that he have need of all these things. Which things? It's not spiritual things. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. It's literally things that pertains to the earth realm. Continue. Verse 33. Mm -hmm. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Why do you need the kingdom of God? Because you have to have a mindset that makes you think as a prince. God is a king. You must be able to think as the child of God. So if you know you are the child of God and he's a king, then you are what? The prince. And seek also his kingdom and righteousness. Righteousness. So in another word, your desire should be focused on pleasing Christ. So when you want an increase, it's not so that you will spend on your own last. You an increase so you will honor God. Hallelujah. So your desire are right in his righteousness. Seeking to please him. And then he promised by saying what and and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, if you can name something, it is a thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you cannot name it, then it's not a thing for you. But if you can name it, it's a thing for you. How you have to position yourself before the Lord God who called you is not complicated. Is Lord, you want my heart to be right before thee. You want my life to be acceptable in your sight, pleasing and well-pleasing. And then you know my heart and you know my thought and you know all. So what I'm concerned for is that, that you strip me from everything that is worldly so that when you leave me with everything that is godly and you give me the things that are earthly I can use them to praise you in your kingdom because I can tell you you may fall like uh, Solomon <laughs> but I think the purpose of Solomon was to show us wisdom Amen? It was not a pathway to say that that's how you're going to end up. Mm -mm. It was a way to say if you don't pay attention, you can also end up that way. So riches cannot turn your heart away from God. The Lord did not say it is impossible to be rich and to be saved. He said it is hard for the rich to go through heaven than a camel to go through the high of the needle. He didn't say it was impossible. However, the Lord shows us through the life of Solomon that every day decision you take, when it is not seasoned in God, it can cause a demise for tomorrow. He went, he took the decision to take the Daughter of uh, Pharaoh. That was the first move he did. In order to have exchange to build a temple. By the time he realized, he had all kind of women coming from all idolatry places in his place. And the Bible said that he ended up building high places for the gods. And he himself sacrificed unto the gods. So what happened unto Solomon, remember the Lord says, the first prayer he did, he prayed by saying, Lord, all I want is give me wisdom and knowledge to, um, to rule your people. And the, the, the entire Bible is the first time I saw 
when the Bible says that the Lord was pleased with the prayer. The Bible said that the Lord was pleased with what he asked. Can you imagine? Somebody asked something and the Lord said, wow, I am pleased with that. So the Lord was so pleased. He said, okay, I'm going to give you what you asked for. And because you have not asked for yourself this, 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 this. Well, that's where the people made the mistake. Solomon did not ask riches because he already received the riches of his father. He was not broke. <laughs> Are you what I'm saying? He, he literally did not ask for it because prior to him, David has gathered all the riches and left there. So he did not have to worry about riches. Are you what I'm saying? He didn't have to worry about anything else. He had already food. Didn't he? <laughs> In another word, he was no longer concerned about any earthly things. But the reason why he had was because somebody followed God. So, because of somebody, all those things were added to him. It's the principle of saying, when you follow Christ, all those things are added to you the way Solomon, all those things were added to him. Now, he had to make a decision on how he's going to now deal with those things. He wanted to use it to honor God. So he finally said, Lord, all I need is you and your people. The Lord says, very well, I am well pleased. What it means is that if you lack food, it will be difficult to pray and to say, Lord, I want to fast. Because your fasting is not real. You just don't have food. If you have food and you decide to fast, then you know you sacrifice something. But regardless, God was still pleased with him because his mindset was right. In another word, whether you have, whether you don't, if your mindset is right, because the Lord knows his heart. He didn't come like, because I already have it, I don't need it. No. But the need for it was not created in his life anyway. But he was not also trying to defraud God either. He was proving to God that God has been good. How can he render? him to do his work and God says see prior you I bless your father and because of your brother father I bless you and because now in between of it you are acting right I'm gonna bless you even more that's why the Bible says that if God, if God can give to the birds and you are more important so meaning before you ask he gives you when you ask he gives you when you don't ask, he gives you. He gives you <laughs> all the time. The only problem with the Pharaoh, as a Pharaoh, um, Solomon, was to show us what a heart that is not continually seeking the will of God can do. It was to show us because you see, when Solomon sinned against God, God did something. He says, I'm going to rent the kingdom from thy hand, but I will not take all. Hallelujah. He said, I will rent and take out, and I will leave you one. And then he says, I will leave you Judah because of Jerusalem that I have chosen for my sake name, my namesake. And then he says, I will do so because of your father, David. And then he even goes further by saying, 
I will rent the kingdom, but not in when you are alive, uh, uh, not in your lifetime. What I'm trying to show here is that when you have established with God the covenant of principle or loving him, such like in the life of Solomon, God will take on himself to keep faithfulness towards you even when you are unfaithful. That's what the Bible says. That if we are unfaithful, he remains faithful. Because he cannot deny himself. So by the Lord showing unto Solomon, how he can still help Solomon. How much more when you are seeking the righteousness. I don't know if you understand the, the, the comparison. Solomon went astray. The Lord did not bring the people to destroy him like he did to many of them. Hallelujah. So how much more when you are seeking, that's why it says if you do seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness, if we add all those things, he was making reference right with Solomon. He was literally making reference right with Solomon. And the question is, what do you need God to do? You know, you got to stop, Lord. You know, you, you know what I want. You got to stop that. <laughs> yeah, you got to stop those type of uh, mindset prayer. When the Lord comes and he says, what do you want me to do for you? Oh, Lord, you know all my thoughts. So do you think he doesn't know what you want? So do you think that because he asks you, then he doesn't know? He wants you to open your mouth and speak. Does it make sense? So in other words, he's demonstrating why you need to speak and ask him. I will finish with this. There was a man who had his son for many years who was being taken by a spirit, a dumb spirit, throwing him all kind left and right. And a disciple went to cast out that demon and they couldn't. And then the father came to the Lord crying, Oh Lord, if you can do anything, Help. So it, it was a kind of like a heartful prayer. See, so if you can't do anything, please help us. The Lord said, Ah, oh, if I can. If you also can believe. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's not because you are acting in a way that is heartfelt prayer, that means it is a right prayer. Oh, Lord, you know, all I want is you. I don't need anything. And after you're calling somebody to say, oh, I don't have gas in my car. But you say you don't need anything. Walk <laughs> or fly. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Foolish prayer gets you into foolish result, and then you wonder what's going on. The way you speak, Speak to your God. At the time, you may not need it. Tell him, Lord, as I come to you, I praise you. Okay. And again, if you say, all I need is Christ, then remember that Christ comes with all, with everything. And when he gives you the rain at his 
season. Amen. Do not pray to retain the rain. If you have faith, you can ask anything whatsoever and it shall be given unto you. If you abide in him, to look and to seek to please him and to seek his righteousness, to deal righteously with men, to deal righteously with people, to stay in his righteousness to please him, then you cannot think that you cannot ask because his righteousness commands you to ask. And thou shall receive. I want you to pray. I want you to pray to ask the Lord. To bless the works of your hand. So that anything and everything you touch, even as you seek Him to please Him and be in Him, He said, He's the one who gives rain in His season. He doesn't refrain the rain. He doesn't hold it. He gives the rain in his season for his purpose. Do not, you do not need to demonstrate to God that uh, you are so holy. No, you only need to be true towards him. And you need to tell him, Lord, you said to ask and I shall receive. You said to ask and it shall be given unto me. So, Lord, I'm asking you, grant me that my hands will be blessed. That the things attached will be blessed. Grant me that I may advance and be at the head and not at the tail. Show me the path. Show me, Lord, the path. Increase. You say you will cause me to be plenteous. In goods so Lord I pray that you will enlarge my territory and help me remain in your will continually you can pray and ask him because you are his child he will not be offic or offended because you ask him he said, you don't have because you don't ask. So ask him. It's not the judge who tells you ask. It's your father who takes you ask. He says, as you come unto me, as you seek to please me, as you seek to honor me, I will grant you the desire of your heart.
the poor, the widow, the orphan are waiting for somebody to help them. If you don't ask to the Lord, they may be waiting for you because you could be the somebody that they're waiting on. Not all poor are fed. Not all widows are ministered unto. Not all often are being helped. So there are rooms to minister to many. So ask to the Lord to bless the work of your hands. Ask the Lord to cause you to be plenteous. For he says, not only he loves the one who gives cheerfully, but he will also continually increase you so you can continually increasingly give. So ask him. He is your father. Ask him. He is your Lord. Ask him. He is your God. <laughs> 